Hey friends, it's Mike, and today is Saturday, June 12, 2021. With this video commentary, I want to talk about comments and how the controllers have conditioned the mass mindset to believe that everyone has something to add and everyone's opinion counts. I personally don't buy into this premise because it is socially engineered propaganda. The premise asserts, both directly and indirectly, that everyone is on equal footing and one person's voice is no less important than the next person. The problem is, this conditioning of intellectual equality is being touted by the very same people that have dumbed down society, with social media being a main cog in the machine. So we have large segments of the population who are programmed, ill-informed, and possess no critical thinking skills, but they are told their voice is as important as someone who is an informed critical thinker. Nothing can be further from the truth. And I know I'm going to ruffle feathers with this commentary because it's going to make some people uncomfortable, even with those that see themselves as truth seekers who have been conditioned to believe this premise. Many think it is virtuous to open up comments to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, regardless of how toxic and non-value ad these comments can be. And trust me, there is an alarming number of people who have no problem being disruptive or who willfully display their lack of awareness. All you need to do to prove this is to put up a YouTube channel with content that cuts across the grain and the zombies come crawling out of the woods. So the controllers that dumb down society to deplorable levels of ignorance are also leveraging this lack of brain power by telling their trolls and programmed robots to poison every well they find with their ignorance, nastiness, and belligerence. And if we take a look around the world, we can see this template being used in every aspect of our reality. The goal is to contaminate the waters to further break the backbone of a civilized society. Open season commenting on social media platforms is nothing more than another psychological operation. It's a subversive method which is used to degrade the discourse, which then creates a lack of civility and ultimately societal chaos. The more degraded a society becomes, the easier it is to control. Here's one of my favorite quotes from the writer and poet Charles Bukowski. Quote, the problem with the world is that the intelligent people are full of doubts, while the stupid ones are full of confidence. End quote. Since I like to explore and to discover, I enjoy presenting my research to people who are inquisitive and want to understand the true nature of this realm. As I have always said, I am not trying to convince anyone of anything. If you agree with me, that's great. If you don't, that's okay too. But we have to come to grips with the fact that that the vast majority of the population are not critical thinkers. They are programmed to consume whatever is fed to them by the Ministry of Propaganda. They are conditioned to obey and regurgitate the official narratives and to defend the very system that oppresses them and keeps them in ignorance. Once we understand this, we can then put social media commenting into its proper context. Not everyone is on equal footing from a critical thinking perspective. And those that apply their God-given gift of intellect and reason are in the minority. And just because someone might excel in a job in the matrix does not mean they have common sense or that they are awake. Most people who excel in the matrix are brainwashed to believe in the system. They have no idea they are being manipulated and that their thoughts are not their own. I periodically receive emails and comments where listeners state they appreciate the civility of the comments section on my channel. To ensure civil discourse, I review and approve every comment. Yes, it is time-consuming, but I will not allow my channel to be degraded by arrested developed behavior. YouTube's algorithms are designed to reward channels that allow unabated commenting. This is from the same platform that censors anything resembling critical thinking. YouTube's model is designed to promote the controller's agenda of a homogenized state of ignorance. To do this, YouTube and other mainstream social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter are stacked with mindless content where the clown show is encouraged to thrive while censoring anything that might actually raise the IQ of the population. Instead, social media is filled with content intended to brainwash the masses into submission and obedience. Now, everyone has the right to express themselves even if they are spouting nonsense. But there is also a misguided understanding of when and where free speech applies. Sometimes I get accused of censoring because I don't allow the trolls, the low functioning, or the intellectually lazy to litter my comment section and thus my channel. 
This is like saying, I have no right to prevent my home from being infested by rats because rats should be allowed to settle wherever they roam. In other words, rats have rights. And my response is, well, so do I. I have a right to preserve and protect the integrity of the content I have created from those that are looking to undermine my platforms with their arrested developed behavior. Free speech means you can express yourself freely, but it does not mean you can do it off the backs of someone else's hard work or that anyone has an obligation to listen to you. Agreeing to disagree in a civil manner is always welcome on my platforms, but I have zero desire or patience to tolerate stupidity, nastiness, or belligerence. And yes, it is my decision to determine what is stupid, nasty, and belligerent on my platforms. The fact that there are pockets of the population that cannot discern or define bad behavior, or worse, they condone it, is a major societal problem we are currently battling with. It is a key variable as to why the world is upside down. The lowest level denominators in society believe they can simply crap in the pool with no consequences. It's not censorship to eject these people from the premises unless one enjoys swimming in a cesspool. We can have free and open speech while we also insist on civility and respect toward each other in an effort to raise the bar of the collective mindset. Otherwise, we spiral into the shit show. People who rant and scream censorship because a particular channel uses discernment to weed out the non-value ad and nasty comments are also conveniently omitting the fact that they have the ability to express themselves on their own channel. Everyone that comments on YouTube has a YouTube account, and therefore, they also have a YouTube channel. So if someone feels they have something to say or some wisdom to impart, they can create their own content and express themselves. Now, whether anyone wants to actually listen to them is a different story, but they do have a platform, the same platform that I have, to create and upload content. Let's assume you are heading up a team to develop a new automobile with advanced technology. When putting together your team, you invited someone who knew a lot about the new design, but then you quickly noticed he is rude and nasty toward others in the room. What if, under the guise of free expression, this person, who we shall call Dan, belches and farts in the room? Should the other participants on your team just accept this behavior because Dan believes he has the right to freely express himself? Or would you ask Dan to leave the room and then recruit someone else who will conduct themselves in a professional and mature manner? Some might say that the project manager censored Dan. But was it the project manager who removed him? Or did Dan remove himself because he was a big jerk and could not and would not behave and respect the others in the room? As you may have figured out, the conference room is a metaphor for the comments section. And on my platforms, the Dans of the world are not welcome unless they can figure out how to conduct themselves in a mature and civil way. And for the record, there is a huge difference between content providers managing their channel to minimize disruptive or non-value ad commenting to YouTube's blatant censorship. YouTube and other major social media platforms are clearly engaged in social engineering and the elimination of any content that defies the blueprint and the agenda of the controllers. With YouTube, there is no agree to disagree position. Dissent is not tolerated at all. And from my experience, they have a high tolerance for questionable or even bad behavior if it helps them to undermine content that does not promote the official state-controlled narratives. The monopolistic social media platforms are engaged in propaganda to condition the masses to engage in groupthink whereas channels like mine promote the sharing of ideas and research, and all we ask is to keep the interaction, whether it agrees or not with the content, constructive and respectful. It's no different than if we were attending an interactive seminar or study group. The same rules of courtesy apply. Another curious behavioral pattern that intrigues me is when someone continually comes back to content that they fundamentally disagree with or which angers them and sets them off into a rage. As I was composing this commentary, a nasty comment came in from a basement dweller that even YouTube flagged as inappropriate from a person who obviously disagrees with my views. 
But why would someone continually subject themselves to content that triggers them to become unglued? If watching my content, or anyone's content for that matter, ruins your day and triggers you to beat your kids and kick the dog, then I recommend watching and listening to videos that soothe your worldview if you cannot cope with material that you do not agree with. And remember, you do have the ability to click the stop button and go elsewhere if you find yourself gnashing your teeth. People who punish themselves in this way should probably seek counseling and therapy because it's not a healthy way to live one's life. The fact is, I approve 99% of the comments that come in. And by the way, for those that just can't help themselves, blocking someone requires one click of the mouse. It's that easy. Every once in a while, a turd will try to make its way into the punch bowl, but this is an infrequent occurrence these days, especially when measured against all the fine people who contribute to the channel's discourse in a mature and clear-thinking way. So to all the critical thinkers, I want to thank you for your contributions. I am committed to making my platforms a place where intelligent people can converse and share ideas without the disruptive nonsense because it's going to be the free thinkers that will turn this ship around. And to close, here's a quote I found from Emmy Lou Harris. Quote, As citizens, we have to be more thoughtful and more educated and more informed. I turn on the TV and I see these grown people screaming at each other. And I think, well, if we don't get our civility back, we're in trouble. End quote. Thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.